Dana, and today we're going to be doing an unboxing of Clash of Beasts, the amazing new tower defense game. No one and cry. No. Okay. No one no one no 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 All right, this is a nice box. All right, let's open it up. Oh, oh, no. oh don't touch me. Let's get it open. The fake. The fake money. Fake money. <laughs> Those things are real, dude. You know what else is real? This channel. How's it going, everyone? It's your boy Darshi Gong, gaming on the dark side, G O T D S, and coming at you with another video for Clash of Beasts. Uh, this is my first official video as an official content creator for the game, which is awesome. So, with that being said, guys, this video was made in collaboration with Ubisoft under the Clash of Beasts content creation program. Woo, that's a mouthful. <laughs> Anyways, we're going to be talking about the currency in this game. So with that being said, let's get into the video. Just like in real life, money makes the world go round, even in Clash of Beasts. Now the premier currency or the main currency of the game are going to be red gems. Um, you can get this by actually spending real money. So that's why I say this is like the main currency because this is the currency you can actually purchase in the game and it will help you to do a lot of things in the game. So that's where we're gonna start. You can grab red gems in the store tab. It looks like a little shop on the side of your screen. Now there's several packages that are available here. This is what we're gonna to use to kind of create the basis for our value. It starts off pretty cheap at like two bucks for 500 gems. Goes all the way up to 49.99 for 15,000 gems. Now, quick little thing, guys. The first time you buy any of these gem packages, they will double the amount of gems. So keep that in mind. If you're going to be buying gems, the first time you'll get double the amount of what it says there. But after that, it's the set amount that it says. So going back to the very first package, 500 gems for 199. That's what we're going to use to create a base value for gems, which we can then use in the future videos to sit there and show you guys kind of the um, uh, cash value of things. That way you can make a much more informed decision if you are going to invest in Clash of Beasts with your actual money. It always helps to kind of know what the value is because there'll be some packs that are worth it, some that are definitely not. And we need to start with an actual base currency. So taking the 199 for 500 gems, if you do that, you divide 199 by 500, you roughly get about each gem costing you 0.004 cents per gem, which is not horrible, obviously, because I mean, gems, you get so many of them, they don't have a ton of value per them. Now, obviously, the higher up you go in the packages, you go all the way to 49.99, then the gem cost drops down to about three, you know, 0 0.003 per gem. So you definitely get more um, uh, bang for your buck when you buy them in bulk. But like I said, just using it as a base value, let's just look at from this point forward, every gem, every individual red gem being worth 0 .004. Um, that's gonna help out with everything we do later on so you guys can kind of see what we're basing value off. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at packages, when you get special gem deals, you can see, man, is this really worth it? Is it better than what we're getting? Those things will go. And as I make future videos, I will use that as, like I said, the basis for this to help you guys out. So with that in mind, guys, that's your red gems. That's, that's you're gonna be your deals there. It's up to you guys if you're going to be buying them. Um, just you know, know what they're worth. Now, let's move on to the next set of currency in the game that um, we would be using quite a bit of and we have a value for. That next currency are going to be these soul shards. Now you get these here throughout the game. You can also buy them. These are what we're gonna be using to um, help forge beasts. We'll talk about that in some other video since we're just talking about currency here, but there's three main packs they have available um, at all times, right? They have the Beast Adept Pack, which is going to be you know, $4.99. You get the Beast Expert Pack and the Beast Master Pack. Um, as always, from time to time, they will have different deals that will pop out that will let you get these Soul Shards, but we just want to get a base value. So we're going to be looking at the $4.99 pack and seeing what we get. So inside this pack, we get 200 Soul Shards, 25 packs of 30,000 sacks of essence and we get 50 VIP points. The VIP points goes towards um, uh, this little VIP rank that gives you extra bonuses. We'll cover that some other time. And like I said, the sacks of essence, that's another kind of 
quote unquote in game currency that we can use. But we're not going to consider that. We're going to look at just the soul shards. That way, you know, we'll just base everything off of that. The other stuff we're going to call is like just bonus stuff, extra stuff. All right. So when you calculate it out, you can see here we're going to be taking 499, dividing it by 200. That's going to give us a value of 0 0.025 per soul shard. But um, it says there's a 36% bonus. What the heck that bonus is actually being measured against? Um, I wasn't too sure. But since they're saying it's a bonus, we're going to calculate that in. So if we then multiply that 0 0.025 by 0 0.64, right, the other percent, that's going to give us a base value of 0, well, 0 0.0. 1.6 per soul shard. So every soul shard that we're going to get has that value. And we can use that now to measure any of the special packs that we have coming up. Or maybe if there's anything where soul shards are included in the pack, you can now calculate a value and see is this worth the money that I'm paying. So just keep that in mind, guys. We're just using these base values like anything else. The more you buy them in bulk, the better it's going to get. All right, let's move on. The next thing you guys are able to buy in game here in the shop are going to be these timer packs, right? They say it's a build, but these are be your timers. Um, you got your mason pack, your artisan pack, and your architect pack. It starts as low as five bucks, it goes all the way up to fifty bucks. Now timers are really going to help out when it comes to building things. You're having to build these towers, and um, some of them, you know, they happen quickly at first, right? A couple seconds, maybe a minute or two. Then it quickly turns into you know days and then multiple days and then like weeks for the things as they get way higher up there. So having um, these timers to speed up those construction process makes it easier for you to level up the towers and do things. And that really comes in handy in the event um, a builder's boom. We'll have a video covering that and some strategies utilizing your timers later on um, some other time. So make sure you know you guys check that out. If you're not subscribed, I highly suggest you guys subscribe. That way you guys get notifications when I do drop my videos, especially if this is a game that you're playing. But yeah, so let's look at the 499 pack and what we get inside that. So in the pack, we got ourselves here 48 one hour speed ups. You got 90, oh, we got 15 of these 90,000 sacks of gold, and you also get another 50 VIP points. Now, just like we do with the soul shards, we're not going to count the gold or the VIP points as part of the cost. Those are just bonus things that we're getting in there. Now, granted, gold and all those things does have value. However, like I said, we're gonna everything's going to be based off just the timers. So, with the one-hour speed ups, we have 48 hour, 48 of them. So that's 48 hours. If we take four, um, a 4.99 divided by 48, it's going to give us 10 cents per hour. However, it does say that this is a 35% bonus. So when you calculate that in to get um, uh, like, oh, that's a bonus on top of that, then what would a normal one be worth? Then it gives us a base value of 7 cents, 0 0.07 cents per hour when it comes to speed ups. So we can utilize that as something we can use to calculate any packs where there are timers included. We can use this base value to help us make much more educated decisions on how we spend our real life money in this game. If you are, if you're gonna do that. I mean, if you're free to play, then obviously none of this really matters. And I'm a, then I guess you're just watching this video because you wanna support the channel, which I truly appreciate and all that. But if you are a freemium, someone that throws a little bit of money into it or a definite pay to play player, well, hey, knowing how your money's going and where, where it's going and how much you're getting for your stuff is definitely important. That way you're not just throwing it away. So keep that in mind, guys. That's our base value. That's cool. Now we have other currencies I want to cover in the game, um, just because they, while you might not be able to buy them, they do matter and it um, helps out because there's there's a quite a bit, and I want to make sure that you know try to alleviate some confusion in the game because it doesn't seem like there's a lot of direction in telling us what we can and can't spend, and there might be a currency in here you didn't even know was in the game. So hopefully this helps. Let's keep on going. So, the various currencies in Clash of Beasts. We've already spoken about red gems and soul shards and even timers. Um, the next thing you want to kind of look at are going to be essence and gold. Now, these are things that you generate in-game from your little essence well and your gold mine. You can take them from other players. Um, players can donate them to you if you're in a clan. 
So you need those things, that, you know, to build your little towers and to um uh, to um, level up your beasts. That's where you need the essence for to feed your little essence wells and stuff like that. So that's that currency. That's where you get that. The next thing we want to talk about here, some people don't know about, is soul dust. Now, soul dust is interesting because you get this whenever you are trying to forge beasts using soul shards. If you don't get a shard, right, if you don't get something that's going to make the beast closer to opening up and unlocking, um, you'll get these little purple bags of soul dust. And the soul dust is used in this building right here. At the top left-hand side of your screen, you can see this little research area. Now, there's a bunch of branches here. You guys can unlock different little perks and things that boost your beasts or your towers or other stuff. There's like three different trees, right? There's the beast tree, the defense tree, the management tree. So the beast trees obviously helps out your beasts. The defenses are going to boost your defense for your bases. And then management trees um, are going to help, you know, make like quality of life type things like more gold, build faster, things like that. So depending on where you want to invest your soul dust, you can invest in these little research projects that can take, you know, some time. I'm assuming the longer we go and the higher up you get, the longer it's going to take, and it costs way more to do. So the more soul dust you acquire, the more you can research. So that's where that soul dust is going to go, guys. So that's what you want to make sure you use that for. All right, so back to the currencies. The next one I want to talk about are these prismatic shards. Now, prismatic shards we're going to be using in forging as well. So that's why I'm kind of keeping these things all together. What's different about them than soul shards is rather than having like a chance of unlocking something, it's guaranteed. Every time you use a prismatic shard, it gives you a shard of whatever beast you're picking, which helps you unlock it directly. You don't have to worry about the randomness of soul shards. They are more expensive. They are harder to get. So make sure you guys are saving those up and only use those for beasts that you absolutely need to unlock to maybe further your quests or to level up your castles and beat someone else maybe. All right, the next thing we're going to be looking at are clan credits. You get these um, from various places. The biggest place you're going to get them is for um, uh, portals. We'll talk about those later. But the clan credits look like this. They look like little golden coins. And you just accumulate these over time as you're going. Now, you can use these in the workshop. The workshop is this building right here that I'm going to click on it. Bloop, that guy right there in the bottom left from, from your soul well, wherever it is. And you can see here, I can buy like this three hour speed up for 900 clan credits. If you look, there's things you can forge through time. You can pay gems or you can use clan credits to buy things like a sky pass and other stuff. So, um, I mean, clan credits, I guess there's an extra little currency you get just from playing the game and it can help to speed things up. I can say this with a clan credit, you instantly get the thing. It doesn't take time to, um, uh, to develop like the timers do and all that so just keep that in mind all right the next currency we're going to talk about are spirit coins and spirit keys you get these from hiring beasts and placing them on your spirit towers on your base you can also get the spirit keys from the um, uh, other players in your clan hiring your beasts and putting them on their spirit towers so you can see right here we're going to go to our spirit tower and you can see where you're going to be able to use the keys that you accumulate so once you enter your spirit tower, you're going to want to click on spirit chest. When you click the spirit chest, it's going to bring up a little tiny, well, chest. Each chest costs you three spirit keys to open. When you click open, you're going to get some random thing. Um, you can get all kinds of stuff, timers. Um, you can also, like I said, that's where you're going to get your spirit coins from. Now the spirit coins you would use to level up your spirit tower. So the spirit tower is going to cycle back and forth. One upgrade will be spirit coins. The next upgrade will be gold. So it kind of goes back and forth that way as you're leveling up your spirit towers. Now, as far as I know, you can only have two active spirit towers on your base at a time. So even though we have multiple places, I want to say there's three or four places where you can have a spirit tower on your base. There's only two that can be active at any one time with a different beast on there. And at least that's as far as I know. If I'm wrong and there's a higher level player that, that knows differently, please comment below and let me know. But as far as I can tell, that's the cap. All right, let's move on to the next currency. The next chunks of currency we're going to talk about are the season tokens and the season keys. The season tokens are those little Raiders of the Lost Ark looking golden dude over there. And you have the season keys or these little golden keys. You need both of these to unlock the seasonal beasts 
um, as we go. The season tokens will help you unlock the legendaries, and you need the keys to unlock the mythics. So when you go to your events tab and you hit season, it will bring you to this tab here. Now, as you unlock things, you, you can do more, but you see the rows here. Each of the rows has an item. Each item costs a certain amount of uh, tokens. As you get the tokens, you're able to get the keys. As you get the keys, you can unlock your mythics. So obviously you wanna get as many tokens as possible to unlock as much as you can because you get all kinds of cool rewards. And what's really cool about this is you get these just from playing the game, doing the raids, uh, actually doing the events and all that will get you the stuff. So if you're playing the game, you're gonna get these things. You just wanna be smart about how you spend them. And that's another video we'll make some other time, but I just wanna point out that that's where you're gonna spend these things. The, the tokens go here and the keys. That's where you need those for. All right, let's move on to the very last little piece of currency I wanna cover for this particular video. So we have the last page here of currencies. We've got Cinders, Energy Packs, and Kingdom of Quest skull, uh, Scrolls. So uh, my bad, there's two things of currency I wanna talk about. Let's talk about the Kingdom Quest Summon Scroll. <laughs> That's a lot, right? Or also known as the Expedition Portal Scrolls that we use in the game. So this is an interesting quote unquote currency that we use in order to get other things in the game. You use these when you hit the Kingdom tab. You want to click on the little kingdom tab down there, and that's going to take you over to, well, the kingdom, where you have all your clan stuff. Sorry about my clan chat. You're kind of out of the way. But look at this. I collected it, and I got myself some clan credits and piles of beast XP, both things that I could use in the game and other places. Now, you see on the bottom row, it says Expedition Portal. That's what these things are, where you guys are able to basically assign beasts to go do a job. Now, the jobs, I think at maximum, take about two hours to do. So you place beasts there. Now at my level, I can only do three expedition portals at a time. I heard from somebody the other night that you can do up to five. That must be a level thing. Maybe when you've leveled yourself up or your clan's at a certain level, you're able to do more expedition portals, but I can only do three. And I try to make sure I have three going all day, every day, just to be collecting the those XPs for my beasts. Um, that way it's easier to level things up and also to get my little clan credits. So make sure you guys, if you have those summon portals, if you do open a portal, um, make sure you tell your clan, hey guys, a portal's open. That way players go in there and they drop their beasts. Now one thing you gotta be careful of, if you're a low level player um, and you're in a high level clan, there's a chance that you might not have any beasts that you can send in. So um, I think though that you can drop portals that beasts of your caliber can go into and then of course the higher guys will jump in. So just keep that in mind guys. Um, it's one of those things, right? In this game, it's a lot about that resource management. And one of the things that you want to also learn to manage is how quickly you level your base and your clan um, and your research and all those things. So that way you're able to, you know, stay relevant with what you have. Otherwise, you can make your the game too difficult and it'll really slow you down. So just keep that in mind, guys, as we go. All right, let's move on to the very last, seriously time, this time, the last currency I want to cover in this video. And that currency is going to be the Cinder and Energy Packs. Now, these two particular currencies are only useful during raid wars. Now, you can accumulate them um, during every other event or any other time. You can get cinders and energy packs and all that stuff. It just kind of happens here and there with some of the chests you get. But this is what you're going to use. Now, we're going to have a separate – well, I should say I, not we. I'm going to have a separate video for raid wars, and I'll go into way more detail on how these – these currencies work and how to maximize your point gain in raid wars that's going to be in other videos so if you guys are interested in seeing that video make sure you're subscribed make sure you hit that bell notification button that way you don't miss out on it we got raid wars coming up i want to say in about three days so i'm going to be working on trying to get that video out before then so that you guys can hit raid wars hard for the last one of this particular season and hopefully finish up at least one of those beast trees for your legendary and maybe even possibly get your mythics. All right, guys, that's the video for this time, right? And all that. Uh, for a Clash of Beasts, I really want to thank you guys. I hope that this was helpful for some. And um, I mean, and if there's anything I might have missed or you have tips on how to maximize the gain on some of these resources, well, hey, please comment below and help the community out. All right, guys, I'm your host, Darth Shigong. And as always, I hope to catch all of you gaming on the dark side. Level one.